in the introduction of the novel Mrs. Dalloway, it's a Wednesday in June 1923 in Westminster in central London as a middle-aged society woman, Clarissa Dalloway, goes to buy flowers for a party she's throwing that night. The novel is written in a modernist, stream-of-consciousness style that ebbs and flows in and out of various characters' thoughts and memories woven into their present actions and interactions. She walks through the Westminster section of London and heads to Bond Street. Clarissa heads to a flower shop, and she thinks she hears a pistol shot while she's picking out flowers. In the rising action, London's residents notice a mysterious motor car driving down the street, and an airplane appears in the sky. Westminster residents and visitors, all shaken by the recent atrocities of World War I, speculate about the car and airplane. Veteran Septimus Warren Smith, mm -hmm. who is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, uh. and his wife, Rezia, are especially uh. alarmed. Clarissa's old lover, Peter Walsh, visits and asks if she's happy. Clarissa thinks of Peter and of another former love of hers, Sally Seton. Later that morning, Peter goes to the park. He notices many changes in London and has a suggestive dream. Septimus is considering suicide and frequently hallucinates, seeing his commanding officer, Evans, who died in the war. Septimus and Rezia see a new psychiatrist, Sir William Bradshaw. Bradshaw recommends Septimus hmm. be taken alone to a rest home. Clarissa's husband, Richard Dalloway, has lunch with politically involved friends and returns home with flowers for Clarissa. He struggles to express hmm. his feelings to her aloud. Elizabeth, Richard and Clarissa's daughter, goes shopping with her history tutor, Miss Kilman. Later that afternoon, Septimus mm. relaxes at home while Rezia mm. works. <gasps> Septimus becomes alarmed by another flashback. Rezia assures him nothing will separate the two of them. Septimus's old doctor, Dr. Holmes, shows up at the house, agitating the couple. In the heartbreaking climax of the novel, Septimus, feeling cornered, jumps out of the window of the couple's apartment, hitting the rails below and killing himself. <gasps> In the falling action, Peter receives a letter from Clarissa expressing how glad she was to see him. He decides to attend her party. In the resolution of the novel, Clarissa hears from Lady Bradshaw about Septimus' death. Though she never met Septimus, Clarissa feels a kind of sympathy towards him as both are troubled by mental illness and appreciate the beauty of life. Reflecting on his death makes her realize all she has. She sheds her feelings of failure and rejoins her party. Peter sees Clarissa in a kind of majestic <laughs> splendor. Seven central characters comprise the stream of consciousness web of the mundane, mystical, and modernist writing that is Virginia Woolf's masterpiece, Mrs. Dalloway. Clarissa Dalloway is the titular character, loving, compassionate, social, and skeptical, with a deep reserve of intelligence and melancholy. She loves life, but often thinks about death and terrible events that might happen. Nostalgia and pain, especially when thinking of Peter Walsh and Sally Seton, have a major pull on her. She's grown more subdued and conventional since her more radical youth. It's strongly implied that she had complicated <laughs> romantic feelings for her old friend Sally Seton in their youth. Nowadays, well-dressed and married to a conservative politician, Richard Dalloway, she is concerned with keeping her rank in society. The novel's events lead up to her hosting a party. Septimus Warren Smith is a former poet, a naturally contemplative and reflective person. After World War I, in which he saw the death of his friend and comrade Evans, Septimus suffers from severe shell shock, which we'd call post-traumatic stress disorder today. He loses his ability to connect to, and even feel, emotions. His thoughts become scattered and frantic. He also oh. suffers from frequent hallucinatory flashbacks. Peter Walsh is intelligent, critical, and discontented with the status quo. Long ago, he'd proposed marriage to Clarissa, but she'd rejected him and married Richard. He still loves Clarissa deeply, but rejects what he considers her worldliness and desire for wealth. His time in India has expanded his perspectives on world affairs. Still, he considers people around him small-minded. Richard Dalloway is a practical, kind man. Not as tormented or complicated internally as the other main characters, he believes in the values of the conservative party and enjoys simple pleasures like the country and dogs. He is deeply devoted to his wife and daughter, though he really struggles to express his feelings. Elizabeth Dalloway, Clarissa and Richard's daughter, is quiet and introspective. She loves nature, the country, and animals, and prefers solitude to parties. And despite her multiple suitors, she has no interest in a relationship. She's curious about the world and longs for more freedom. And she's close with her tutor, who encourages her intellectual growth. Rezia Warren Smith misses her native Italy and longs for a child. 
She is supportive of her husband Septimus and tries to help ground him to the real world. The two have a tense marriage, mostly because of his shell shock, but she loves him and considers most of her memories to be happy. Sally Seton was an outsider at Clarissa's youthful gatherings, but her intelligence and wit quickly endeared her to Peter and Clarissa. She spoke her mind frequently, setting her apart from the other women of the time who behaved with traditional decorum. She and Clarissa had an intimate emotional relationship, culminating in a kiss that was the highlight of Clarissa's life. Airplanes and trees are the key recurrent symbols growing and soaring in and out of the characters' minds in the modernist masterpiece, Mrs. Dalloway. Early in the novel, an airplane flies over London, becoming a catalyst for the thrills, fears, and anxieties of various characters. The airplane, a new technology at the time, symbolizes the swift changes in London's urban society after World War I changes that inspired the modernists to reflect on human feelings of confusion and helplessness. Since everyone outside Buckingham Palace is watching the airplane, the symbol brings together Londoners from different walks of life, emphasizing London as a character of its own. The airplane also represents the war and the shadow of the war that still lingers in the lives of characters like Septimus. Writing in the sky as it goes, it appears to be an advertisement for toffee, but it symbolizes a lot more than that to those bustling about their days. Trees are key symbols, especially in the minds of Septimus and Clarissa. Septimus asserts men must not cut down trees. Trees symbolize an everlasting life force that gives meaning to existence in the post-war chaos. Clarissa and Septimus are acutely aware of the temporary nature of their existence. They are comforted by the fact that nature, including trees, will outlive them. In a dream, Peter envisions a solitary traveler <gasps> mesmerized by the spectral presence of a tree. To Peter, trees represent a mysterious femininity, a force he also sees in Clarissa Dalloway. Age and memory, the passage of time, the aftershocks of war, and stress and mental illness. These are the central themes of Virginia Woolf's novel, Mrs. Dalloway, that still resonate with readers nearly a century after its publication. In Mrs. Dalloway, the past informs the present. Age and memory is a theme that speaks to the ways Peter, Richard, and Sally consider how their youthful time together shaped their current grown-up lives. Memory helps the characters understand why yeah. they made certain choices and reminds them how full and complex their lives have been. Yet the novel's fractured, magical prose style shows that memory can be unreliable. For Septimus, whose memories are affected by his profound trauma, the past spirals into the present and creates yeah. ghostly visions. London's settings have a kind of memory too. Peter reflects on the changes the city has undergone in five years and the way it continues to remember its royal, noble past. Virginia Woolf emphasizes that the war dead live on in the memories of the living. Clarissa thinks frequently of death, though she has a deep desire for life. Yet age brings perspective, and by the end of the novel, aging is celebrated rather than feared. The passage of time, as told by the hours on Big Ben, dictates the characters' movements and pushes them to accomplish as much as possible. The city of London is driven by time, Appointments, traffic, work, lunch hours, the unstoppable movement of time provides both stress and the comfort of order and rhythm. Big Ben is a giant monument to moments themselves. In some moments, time speeds up for characters. In others, it seems to slow down. The novel's modernist style allows for leaps in time, though the 12 hours of real time in the novel reiterate the notion that thoughts have the ability to stop narrative time, showcasing Wolf's focus on the interior of life. The aftershocks of war, manifested in shell shock or post-traumatic stress disorder, brought on by the stress of World War I, is most apparent in the life of Septimus and his wife, Ratzia. But war's effects are everywhere. Airplanes in the sky recall it, and London's loud traffic echoes the link between technology and violence. England is permanently changed, and this rings out both patriotism and cynicism in the novel's characters. Politically involved Londoners like Lady Bruton and Hugh Whitbread wonder just how England can best repay its veterans. Miss Kilman finds meaning in helping other countries hit harder than England. Peter admires and worries about young military men. 
Wolf's prose goes deeply into characters' imaginations, so stress and mental illness experienced by Septimus and Clarissa feels authentic and honest to the reader. Both struggle with depression and pain, but can still see incredible beauty in life. The novel also discusses the effect mental illness has on loved ones, such as lonely Ratzia Smith, who cares for her husband. Clothing, flowers, water, and Big Ben are the motifs of modern life that show up again and again in Mrs. Dalloway. Clothing signifies social class, personality, and priorities. Mrs. Dalloway's silver green evening dress reflects colors found in nature, symbolizing her love for the outdoors and need to be part of the wider world. Elizabeth's distaste for shopping shows an emerging desire for independence. Hugh Whitbread's shopping habits show his need to cultivate elegance. Miss Kilman's raincoat reflects self-sacrifice. She's hiding within its material. Flowers appear as representations of beauty, care, and aspiration, and the characters' hopes that something good will happen. Richard brings Clarissa red and white roses to prove his love. Mrs. Dalloway buys flowers personally for her guests to demonstrate her devotion. Sally has a way with flowers, particularly the more unusual blue hydrangeas, signifying her rare intelligence and enthusiasm for life. Water signifies change and transformation. Its shifting states represent the shifting mental states of the characters. Septimus and Clarissa often feel drowned or out to sea. The movement of the tides reflects the inevitable daily changes people observe and flow through. Water, in its fluidity, also reflects the process of life and death and evokes the characters' feelings of loneliness and hopelessness. Big Ben, the iconic giant clock in Westminster, unifies the many separate characters who all hear it ring at the same time. Big Ben is a motif that represents a shared reality, a reminder that everyone is in the city together, connected by an order and continuity of time. 